Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on the gastrointestinal tract. In this video, what we're going to talk about is the histology of the small intestine. Okay, so the topic for this video is the small intestine. So we'll start off with the very basic anatomy of the small intestine. Really, all we're going to discuss is the division of the small intestine into the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. Okay, and then what we'll discuss is the histology of the uh, wall of the small intestine. Okay, right then. Uh, let's start off with the anatomy then. So we'll start off with the esophagus, we'll then go into the stomach, and then we'll see the small intestine. Okay, right. So, here is the esophagus, here. And that will come down and empty into the stomach, which is here. Okay, like so. Then you've got a pyloric sphincter here, between the stomach and then uh, the small intestine after that. And then here comes the first portion of the small intestine, which wraps around in this very distinctive C shape, like so. And the pancreas is sitting in this sort of gap here, so I'll just put the pancreas in there. Okay, like so. And then it will continue wrapping around, okay, a few times, so I'll draw this out. So here comes the small intestine, and it's just a tube, basically. Okay, and then it's going to wrap around one more time now. Okay, and then its length will end, and it will empty into the colon, which I'm not going to draw here, because we're not discussing the large intestine here. Okay, right, so that's the end of the small intestine now. So it will end with the ileocecal um, sphincter, and then you'll have the beginning of the uh, colon. So you'll have the cecum first, and then go into the ascending colon, etc. Okay, right, so, here is the small intestine, so, let's just label up the things we've got here. In fact, we might want to add a little bit of colour onto this, because it looks a little dull in black and white. So, in turquoise here, we have the esophagus, okay, so this is the esophagus. Okay, then after the... Oh, and I'm using the um, British English spelling of esophagus, which is silly, I know, uh, but uh, I have been brought up with this, so I can't get rid of it now. Uh, but uh, you have the silent O in front of esophagus uh, in um, British English spelling of the word. So if you're American, just remove that O and write it the way you like. Okay, right. Uh, so... Next, you have the stomach here, which I'll have in orange, and that ends with the pyloric sphincter, which is a tight sphincter between uh, the stomach and the small intestine, which can control the amount of um, fluid that is moving from the stomach into the small intestine. So this is the pyloric sphincter here. Okay, and in orange, we have the stomach. Okay, so this is the stomach. Now, we go into the small intestine, and I'm going to divide the small intestine up into its different portions. So, this first portion here, in pink, this is the duodenum, okay, and this ends around here, okay, so this in pink here is the duodenum, or in vivid purple I think that colour is actually, okay, so this is the duodenum. Okay, the next portion after the duodenum, I'll have in green here. Okay, and this is the jejunum. Okay, so we'll continue this on all the way down to here. Okay, so that's the jejunum. And then the final portion of the small, oops, jejunum, no, no, that's fine, jejunum. Okay, and then the final portion of the small intestine after the jejunum is called the ileum. Okay, so I'll colour the ileum now in red here. So, that then is the ileum. There's one final thing we need to label on this diagram, and that's the pancreas. So what colour should I colour the pancreas in? I think I'll have the pancreas in blue. So in blue here, this is the pancreas, which secretes a lot of the enzymes that uh, are responsible for digestion into uh, the duodenum. Okay, so this is the pancreas. Right, okay, so here then is the picture of the gastrointestinal tract, or at least a portion of it. Okay, so 
What we now want to look at is the histology of the stomach wall. So, sorry, not the stomach wall, the histology of the small intestine. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to imagine cutting down a portion of the small intestine. And let's imagine it's the duodenum. Classically, people use the duodenum. There's not much difference between uh, what you would see if you cut through the duodenum, the jejunum, or the ileum. Okay, right, so we are going to cut uh, through the duodenum like this, and we're basically going to take a little slice here and have a look at the wall of the small intestine. Okay, so let's now draw what we would see. So, basically, we would see little projections outwards called villi. So, let me draw this here. So, here, this projection upwards like this is a villus. Okay? And now, in between two villi, you actually then have pits coming down as well. So, I'll draw one of these here. Okay, and these pits are called intestinal glands, or more theatrically, crypts of Liebercum. Okay, I'll write that in a moment. And then you'll have another villus here. So basically, uh, the intestinal wall has these little projections upwards known as villi, okay, and these little projections downwards known as intestinal glands, or crypts of Liebercum. Okay, right. Uh, we will come back and discuss the folds of Kirkring right at the end. Okay, so don't worry about the fact that I haven't shown those yet. We'll come back to those right at the end. Okay, so basically, let me make uh, a layer of epithelial cells now, because at the moment I've just got a line. I want to give these cells a thickness, so I'm going to draw their bottoms here. Okay, like so. So all over the small intestine, you have this layer of simple columnar epithelial cells. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, basically, the simple refers to the fact that it is a monolayer. Okay, so you don't have cells stacked one on top of each other. Okay, so simple means that you've only got one cell uh, at, uh, well, it's a one cell thick, basically. The epithelium is one cell thick. Okay, so where should I write this? So this is a simple, which means one cell thick. Columna refers to the shape of the cells. Okay, so it means column-like. So it refers to the fact that these epithelial cells are quite tall, basically. Okay, and then it's an epithelium because it faces the outside world. Okay, right. So another name for one of these simple columnar epithelial cells here is to call it an enterocyte. Okay, so entero means pertaining to the intestine, site means cell, so it means a cell of the intestine, basically. Now, let's just pull out one of these simple columnar epithelial cells, or these enterocytes, and look at its structure in a bit more detail, because actually they have something that I haven't been able to show on this picture. Okay, so if we look at its structure in a little bit more detail, basically even the cell doesn't just have a flat apical surface. Instead, it has these microvilli, as they're called, projecting outwards. So these tiny little projections in the cell itself uh, are called microvilli. So, why does the intestinal wall have all of these projections? I mean, we've got, you know, these massive great villi, which are projections of the epithelium, and then even the epithelial cells, they have these microvilli on their surface. Okay, the whole purpose of this is to try and increase the surface area of uh, the small intestine wall, basically, or the small intestine surface. Okay, now why do you want to do that? Well, the small intestine surface is the surface across which you are trying to absorb nutrients, okay? So you want it to have the maximum surface area possible so that we can absorb as many nutrients as possible from the lumen of the small intestine because the small intestine is the main site of absorption, okay? So overall, we usually consume in a day around 1.5 uh, litres of fluid, okay? So that's how much we ingest. We also secrete into the intestine around 7 litres 
of fluid, okay? So in the form of pancreatic secretions, in the form of bile secretions, in the form of gastric acid secretions, all of these secretions add up to around 7 litres. That gives us around 8.5 litres to reabsorb of fluid, basically. Around seven of that is reabsorbed in the small intestine. The other 1.5 then goes on through to the colon, basically. So most of the fluid uh, absorption is going to occur in the small intestine, basically. So that's why we need such a high uh, surface area. Right, so um, really what I need to do is, you know, divide this surface layer of cells into separate cells all the way around, uh, but it will take a lot of time, okay? So I think I'm going to do it now. I've decided I'm going to do it. So I'll divide up all of these cells up so that the picture looks more convincing. It will be worth it in the long run. Okay, in the meantime, whilst I'm doing this, we can discuss what all of these um, enterocytes are going to be sitting on. Okay, so at their apical surface, they have these microvilli, which are these little evaginations of their apical surface membrane out into uh, the lumen of the intestine. On their basolateral side, what are they actually sitting on? Well, basically, they're sitting on what all epithelia sit on, okay, which is a basement membrane. Now, basically, a basement membrane is a meshwork of proteins. It's a rigid meshwork of proteins, okay? So, remember, the cells themselves are, you know, just blobs of gloop, effectively. So, what is actually holding them onto the um, surface of the wall of the small intestine? Well, basically, it's because they are attached to the basement membrane. This is what stops them just falling into the lumen and getting washed away. Okay, so I'll show this basement membrane in turquoise here. Okay, so it's a meshwork of protein. Now, the main protein it consists of is collagen, but it also has other proteins within it, such as fibrillin and also laminins. Okay, fibrillin is important in holding together the different layers of collagen. Okay, and laminins are important for the attachment of the um, basolateral surface of the enterocytes onto the basement membrane. Okay, so in turquoise here, this is supposed to represent a basement membrane. Okay, so let's put a few more labels onto our picture before we go any further. So, basically these projections outwards, which have this basement membrane with uh, an epithelial cell covering, and all of these epithelial cells will have microvilli, even though I haven't shown all of that, this is called a villus. Okay, so microvilli are the tiny little projections that you have uh, on the apical surface of an enterocyte. Okay, microvillus would be the singular. Uh, a villus is the massive great projection that you have of many epithelial cells. Okay, and the plural would be villi. Okay, so we've got two villi shown here. This invagination that we've got down here. This is what's known as an intestinal gland, or it's also more theatrically called a crypt of Lieberkuhn. Okay, so we can call this either an intestinal gland, or if you're in the theatrical mood, uh, this is called a crypt of uh, Lieberkuhn. Okay, and that has one of these funny sort of um, German symbol things here. Okay, Lieberkuhn, like that. Right. So, basically, uh, these intestinal glands will be secreting certain gut hormones, but importantly, right at the base of the crypt of Lieberkuhn, okay, shown in red here, you have stem cells, okay? Now, what are these stem cells doing? Well, basically, their role all the way down here is to produce new enterocytes, okay? So I told you that the enterocytes are um, attached to the basement membrane, but you know, what happens is gradually they make their way up, okay? And then they eventually fall off at the top of the uh, villi, 
Okay, so basically there's a cycling process here. You will not have the same enterocytes on the surface of your villi, of your small intestine, as you had uh, when you were a baby, for instance. Because what's happening is a constant cycle. You are constantly producing new enterocytes from these stem cells at the base of the crypts of the bacoon. Okay, these enterocytes then gradually move up. So they move up the sides of the intestinal gland, then they move up the sides of the villi and generally they get near the top and then they'll pass into uh, the lumen of the intestine and they'll be uh, well they'll be excreted within the feces okay so there is a cycling of enterocytes you do not keep the same enterocytes you're continuously making a fresh covering for your intestine okay right so let's now take this picture a little bit further then Okay, so basically, um, the layer underneath the basement membrane is what's known as the lamina propria, and it's a layer of connective tissue. But it's quite difficult to show what the lamina propria is until we've shown what lies beneath the lamina propria. So I'm firstly going to tell you what lies beneath the lamina propria, and then I'll tell you what the lamina propria is. Because basically, the lamina propria is just the gap in between the basement membrane and then what's underneath. So, this layer that I've just drawn underneath is what's known as muscularis mucosi. Okay, so this means the muscle layer, that's what muscularis means, and then mucosi means of the mucosa. And I'll tell you exactly what the mucosa is in a moment. But for now, basically, this is a layer of smooth muscle cells. Okay, so you'll have a number of smooth muscle cells in this muscularis mucosi here. Okay, and I'll colour in those smooth muscle cells in red here. Right, so muscularis mucosi is just a layer of smooth muscle cells. Now, this isn't a very thick layer of smooth muscle cells. This is, in fact, a prophetically thin layer of smooth muscle cells. The proper layer of smooth muscle cells is further out. We'll come to the proper layer of smooth muscle cells later. Okay, so this is just a very thin layer of smooth muscle cells. So, going back now to the lamina propria, the lamina propria is basically a layer of connective tissue that is everywhere in between the basement membrane, so it's all of this as well, okay, so it's everywhere in between the basement membrane and the muscularis mucosi. Okay, so all of this area that I'm highlighting in yellow, this will be the lamina propria. Okay, right, so where should I write that? Because I want to keep it free at the moment. Okay, so in yellow, this is the lamina propria. Now, basically, it's a layer of connective tissue. So there's a lot of connective tissue within the lamina propria. And effectively, it's just the gap in between the basement membrane and the muscularis mucosi. Now, what will be in the lamina propria? Well, there'll be little arterioles, little venules, also special lymphatic vessels, uh, which will be called lacteals, and we'll come back to those in a moment. Okay, right. So I think we'll call it there for this video, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.